What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 10 of On Shape. Today, specifically, we're going to be looking at is circular pattern, and uh, we're going to do that by making a uh, car rim for an atomic blocks kit. And so uh, you can do this to make rims. If anything, what I'm going to suggest is that this is a wonderful thing to shoot for to make, so you can try to make this on your own. Uh, but anyways, so let's go ahead and get on started. So I'm going to go back to the main hub, and let's go all the way back. And I'm going to go to create, and we're going to go document, and we're just going to call this circular pattern. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create the body of my rim. Now I'm going to do an interesting thing here in that I'm going to uh, start a sketch, view normal too, but instead of just doing the inside and the outside of the rim, we're actually going to do it at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, a circle for the inside of the rim to go under the axle, and then I'm going to do a circle for the outside of the rim. And there we go. So what I'm going to do now is, let's go ahead and dimension this. Uh, that inside uh, axle is probably going to be in the realm of 3 8 So I'm going to do 3 8 And notice how everything kind of scales to it. It kind of snaps in. I thought that was a really cool feature. And so what it is, is that these circles are all scaled with each other and they're kind of locked in. And so if we get it proportionate right, and that's where my first dimension in there, it kind of shrinks up. Okay, so now I think we're done with this sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom on out a little bit, hit finish sketch, and let's hit shift E for extrude. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and make my planes invisible, just so that I'm only dealing with this piece right here. Next thing we do is we can click on two different sketches right here, or two different parts of our sketch that we're gonna extrude at the same time. And this allows us to not have to make two different sketches and then two different extrusions. We can kind of, <coughs> excuse me, we can kind of do it in the same breath. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and then just click on check mark there and we're looking good. One thing I'm gonna hit on later is that these were made as two different parts but we're gonna hit on parts a little bit later. I'm not really too concerned. So if you're asking questions about, hey, mine came with the same color or different colors, it's because if it's the same part, it will be the same generic color. If they're different parts, on shape automatically assigns a different color to that part. That way you can help differentiate them. But I'm gonna continue moving on forward. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just create that rim. So I'm gonna uh, right click on that face that I really wanted to be on. Let's go back there. And I want to be on the edge right here. So I'm gonna right, oh, right click on that face and click on new sketch. And it starts a sketch on that plane. All I need to do now is uh, click right click and then view normal to sketch plane and it'll put me, boom, right on there. Didn't have to worry about any offset planes, didn't have to worry about anything else. Uh, we're just good to go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a circle for the inside of my rim. So let's got a dimension of, this is gonna be 3 8 okay? And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a circle that's on the outside here, and that's gonna look like it's gonna be 1.25, so one and a quarter inch, okay? Now that I've got an inside circle matched with that inside of the axle, and I've got another circle matched with the inside of the rim. You can do the outside one, but this is kind of what the atomic box kits look like. To help not be confused, I'm gonna go ahead and make these other two pieces disappear that we can kind of see what's going on. They're still there. We can make them visible by just hiding those parts. Um, but let's go ahead and move back on where we're at. Next thing I'm gonna do is create one part of my circular pattern and then we're gonna rotate it. So what I found to be really helpful is to just find the top of my circle and you notice some dotted lines pop up. That's just telling me that it is perfectly vertical and it is tangent to the circle right here. And so we're just gonna do that and plop in our semicircle shape here Let's just eyeball this and let's go ahead and do a dimension of, let's do a half inch. Okay, 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off this excess piece. So I'm going to click on the trim tool and this allows me to just delete that piece I do not need. Now you can if you really want to go to delete these things but I'm going to show you how to just keep them as is and you don't need to even worry about it at all in the long run. So we're going to go ahead and then exit out of trim and now we're going to do a new thing called circular pattern. So you see these four little boxes up here on the top in the middle is linear pattern and so that drop down gets us to circular pattern. Now I'm in this kind of mode where it's asking what do you want to uh, put in a circle. So I'm going to click on this geometry right here and it's going to open up kind of this uh, very interesting environment we haven't seen so far. The first one is going to be how many times do you want to rotate this and so we're going to click on this double click on it and we're going to say five because I want there to be five of those semicircles. And the second thing you can change is by default it's doing the center origin of that circle because how I've built the part but you can change where this center of this circular pattern is going to be at by just holding down and dragging around. It just snaps in the middle because that's exactly where I need it. And then the third thing you can change is at what angle is this rotating around? Is this all the way around? By default, it's going to do all the way around. It says 288 because that last rotation would be a full 360 and it would start to repeat itself. So don't worry about this angle too much, but you can have it only rotate halfway around at 180 if you really want to. Um, but by default, it'll do one full revolution repeating whatever geometry you want it to. And then we're, once we're done with that, we're gonna, you see my mouse cursor now has got a green check for that left click button. So if everything is good on your circular pattern, all you need to do is click left anywhere else that's not geometry or something you could be interacting with. So off to the side, I'm just gonna click left and there we go. Our geometry was repeated. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click that green check mark because we're now officially done with this sketch. I'm going to bring my other parts back in and we can see that this rim is going to look kind of okay. You can play around with different geometries, you could do triangles, something maybe interesting to do something intricate, but as long as we keep that center body one, uh, I say one profile, we can extrude it all at the same time. So I'm going to hit shift E for extrude and I'm gonna click on this profile right here. That depth, we're gonna make it to be, uh, let's do one point, oh, sorry, yeah, 0. 0.125. Make it pretty thin there. All right, actually, let's, uh, let's, uh, yeah, that's okay. Well, we're all good there. I wonder if I can actually, let's see if we can, uh, let's do 1 16th. Oh, let me do 1 16th. Hey, there we go. Make it real thin. Alrighty, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when I click uh, check mark on this, um, I'm going to click on new as well. And the reason being is that I, I want this to be considered a new part. And you notice all three of them become different colors because I have three different parts here. So what we're going to do in the next follow-up videos is how to do extrusions, whether it's add or remove. That way you don't get 15 different parts for something that should actually be one part in itself. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, feel free to throw them down in the comments or shoot me on social media. Uh, hopefully you're going to stick around for the rest of the day. So I'm really excited for what is in store down the pipeline for 100 days of Onshape and then even on top of that 100 days of learning. There's already talks of uh, kind of what can we go beyond a 3D modeling environment. And so feel free to stick around and then I will see you guys on the next video.